at his blessed birth, the stars their exultation Good afternoon and welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth and a very Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. We, um, I'm just taking this all in. Um, we are deep and wide physically here in the sanctuary and also uh, with all of you who are online. And as it has been for the last 21 months, somehow the Spirit is connecting us in all the places so know wherever tonight finds you, wherever you are right now, uh, that your presence matters deeply uh, to us, and we're so grateful for that. We are gathered to worship tonight and to hear again this story um, that we know. And um, God coming into the world as a little baby, and even though we know it, uh, somehow each and every year, there is something that's meant to... Um, gleam for us 
that we just need to hear individually as a community, and we just trust that to be so. If you are online, everything that you need will be on the screen. If you are here in the sanctuary, you have your bulletin, we have the screen, and we will guide you through all the pieces of worship. So as we begin, it is with joy that I invite uh, Don and Tim Strumman to come up front and light the Advent candle and the Christ candle and bring up baby Jesus. God of life, we gather on this holy night to hear the mystery and marvel of how you come into this world. Come, Lord Jesus, come into the lives of the poor, bringing hope, into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution, into the lives of the weary, bringing rest, into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness, and into our lives and longings, wherever our place. Come, Lord Jesus. The light shines, the angels proclaim, the shepherds hear and go, a mother ponders. God's promise is born. God's promise is news of great joy for all people. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing joy to the world.
We pray together, God in flesh, your promise breaks through heaven on this holy night. Like the shepherds, we are called to go and tell what is made known through your love. May this call be born into our hopes and fears, and may be known in our words and actions. Christ is born. Amen. You may be seated. is written in the second chapter of Luke, beginning at the first verse. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, 
because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. That region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them, and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go out of Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you to Lynn and to Bob. And kids, I invite you to come up front with me up here. Come on up. No age requirements. You don't have to be happy to come up. Hi, everybody. Come on up. This is actually perfect. Hello. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Find a place, any place. So I want to take a moment and introduce you to some friends who are here with us tonight. Ha! Has anyone seen the movie Inside Out? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about who's here. There's Joy, right? And who's next to Joy? Fear. And who's, who's got the hot head? That's anger, and everybody's roasting their marshmallows on anger's hair. And who's next to anger? Disgust. And then who's next to disgust? That's sadness, right? And what's the movie all about? Yeah, feelings. And Joy is trying so hard to make sure that Riley's life is not filled with sadness, but rather joy. So when sadness comes close, Joy's like, wait, wait, wait. And then it gets really crazy at the end. And and Joy is a little confused about everything that's going on. And I want to show you a little clip at the end of the movie. And for our friends who are online, just in case our friends at Pixar are also watching, if by chance that you get cut off, you come back and join us. Um, But let's take a look at this little movie clip. Thank you. 
Please don't be mad. Come here. So what do they realize? It was actually through Riley's moment of sadness. It was hard to hear, but she said, I miss home. I miss Minnesota. I miss my hockey team. I miss my friends, right? And then she goes to her parents, and in that moment of sadness is where the joy comes. So in the Christmas story that Bob and Joe Lynn just read, the angels say, I have news of great joy. But that doesn't mean this whole life is about being happy. It's actually in our sadness and in the world that feels broken a lot of the time that that joy comes. Now, look at that picture again. What do you notice about joy in that picture? What do you notice? Oh, yeah, she's kind of, she's lit up, yeah. What else do you notice about joy? She, she looks like happy. Yeah, she's kind of has that look, but you know what? She has blue hair. Who else has blue hair? Sadness, Sadness and joy both have blue hair. They're kind of alike. And then my favorite thing about joy, she's barefoot. She doesn't wear shoes. And that's like God when he comes into this world. He comes as a little baby, and babies are not born with shoes on, are they? No, it's skin on skin, and it's skin in this earth. And it reminds us of that, that this story, that God comes that close. Like joy with blue hair, it's joy and sadness together. And God comes into this world to be like us, to be human, to bring his love. So I'm going to tell you this. I have never, ever, ever, ever done this before. I have bare feet right now. I'm going to preach my sermon with bare feet, just like Joy, okay? So I'm not sure if you guys can do this at church, but maybe you can go barefoot sometime tonight or tomorrow to remind you of that joy that comes into this world, okay? All right, let's pray. God, um, to be together again uh, for the closeness of children and the anticipation of this night for so many reasons, mostly uh, because we don't have to hide that you come in, joy and sadness swirl together with this news that we don't have to do this life on our own, uh, that we matter to you and we matter to each other. So God, help us receive this message from you specifically, that you come to be with us. Help us remember that we don't have to hide in this world to live barefoot and open to where you are calling us. And so for all these things, God, and for these kids among us, for the joy in our hearts, we pray. And we all said, now I want to show you this. This is the letter A in sign language. Can everybody do the letter A? and then you slap it super hard on your hand. Amen. Thank you for coming up. It was so good to see you guys. Merry Christmas.
God's grace and love and peace and presence tonight on Christmas Eve. Amen. My nativity set only has one shepherd. But Luke tells us there were shepherds living in the fields in that region near Bethlehem. We will never know how many there were that night but I'm sure it was a little community, supporting each other as they roam the fields, protecting and keeping each other in the unspectacular work of tending sheep. And thank goodness they were together on the night when out of the deep blue night sky, an angel of God came out of nowhere and stood before them. The light pouring down from heaven was both magnificent and terrifying, enough to shake them out of their routine. They listened, tried to take it all in, grateful that they were together to affirm that this was actually happening and not a dream. And then the miracle happened. They turned to each other, and said, and Luke quotes, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste. They clocked out of shepherding to do this thing that the angel told them to do. That was the call, to go, see, and tell what they had heard. And it wasn't a simple request for these shepherds. They were held under the same census that Joseph and Mary came to Bethlehem for. It would have been way safer for them to stay in the fields, away from Emperor Augustus and his regime, and not enter the city where they could be seen and taxed even more. Yet they still went. They held this divine message that needed to be delivered, and God entrusted this little community of shepherds to do it. And somehow they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger, just as the angel had said. And they showed up, they came unannounced, awkwardly interrupting the baby's first feeding, to tell Mary that an angel came down from heaven in the middle of a field with news of great joy. They said, the baby you just birthed is the Savior, the Messiah. You see, those shepherds needed to share that they too were in on how God was entering the world. And thank goodness... Mary and Joseph needed to hear what the shepherds had to tell them because Mary not only was carrying a baby in her belly, but the reality that she was about to birth God's son. 
She was living only on a promise and had to trust every day that the next thing would come. To tell her that this was real because there was no playbook for her to follow to what was happening in her life. It had been a scrappy nine months of waiting and trusting that she would be given what she needed And now she's again in unexpected places and circumstances away from home because the emperor is ordering people around to ensure he can squeeze as much money out of them as he can. So now Mary is having her baby in some strange stable or cave without a midwife or a mother by her side, questioning all of this. And then strangely, strangely, these shepherds affirm that God hasn't given up on the plan. And in fact, she is holding the divine in her arms. The next thing comes to remind her that she is not alone in this life. And Luke tells us everyone who heard the shepherd's story were amazed And Mary kept pondering in her heart the frailty of these divine encounters coming through unexpected people. It doesn't sound like the shepherds stayed too long. They then returned to their fields, clearly changed, at least for the moment, because they were glorifying God for all that they had heard and seen. And that's it from the shepherds. They never take the headlines again. They lived out their call and would forever be noted in this story of God coming into this world thousands of years later. The angel of God found them on their night shift, and they heeded the call. Mary needed them to continue her call And they were a piece of this ongoing story of God, day by day, person by person. I have doubted over these last couple years. I have questioned God's presence in this tangly mess of COVID, racial trauma and injustice, the breaking apart of how we do church school, work, and life. And now looking back, I can see a little bit more clearly how the divine light of hope was passed person by person to make known that God has not given up on this world. Like Mary, it's a scrappy process so risky for God to trust us as imperfect humans filled with strong opinions and doubtful hearts. Yet God chooses this way, literally baby steps, to bring his love and mercy into the world. This is how Christ is born. We are all busy, and it is right and fair to say that you're unable to heed the often unexpected invitation of God to go see and tell what comes. There are so many demands and distractions, and yet what would it mean to simply say, yes, I will go? And to know what you carry, what you receive, is not your own, but God's. And you are sharing it with someone who so needs to hear that God has not given up on them or the world just yet. You become a bearer of the light, a daily deliverer of the divine, a carrier pigeon of God's favor. You become a part of the story. And so maybe tonight, what you were meant to unwrap is a holy permission slip written by God to pause the work 
so you can witness to God's presence here and now. You don't need to quit your job. Your work will still be here. But when you say yes, and when you go and tell, you will know that you are a part of how God is being born into this world. And those world so needs that new life right now. You see, this is the news of great joy. God doesn't miss the small things, the daily encounters of grace. God gets in the details and simple requests. And these are all a part of how God comes down. Seriously, the shepherds could have said no or not now. And we would not have the story that was just read. I'm sure the odds of a no were more probable than the yes. And yet God still took the risk. His grace breathing light, bringing light into a weary, fragile world. And God still takes the risk of becoming human and coming down into this world. And that's why you are here. That's why we make a big deal out of Christmas Eve. Why we light every candle and sing every song. We set out the nativity set piece by piece because we need to hear that this story is true and that each of us has a place in it. The wise mentors in my life, when I am overwhelmed and underwhelmed, trying to figure out what I should do, have simply said, Beth, do the next thing. I bristle at this advice. It is so mundane and practical. Shouldn't this life be filled with decisions that require overthinking and high hurdles to jump? It doesn't sound like that tonight. God is acting in the next thing, calling everyday people, coming to remote fields in a community of shepherds so the message can be shared with the whole world. Oh, holy night. In your high hopes for 2022, just be a shepherd. And what if we at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth did just that? Stop in the moment, listen to what God is calling us to do, go and share this, and then return with a little glory to God, trusting that if it happened once, it will happen again. What if we didn't overthink it? Just trust that the story is unfolding person by person, held in the grace of God who cannot stay away, who is here just now to be with us. Christ is born. Say yes and just go. Amen. Please stand as we sing.
Dear friends online, we will now share the piece, so feel free to type in the comments um, and share your piece there, and we will connect with you in that way. And for all of us here in the sanctuary, sometimes we have these really sterile poses with our masks on. It's okay to turn around and to smile and to wave and greet people around you uh, because it is Christmas Eve, you know. And so now may the peace of God be with you all. We will both share and receive peace from each other and also collect the offering for all the ways that you give to the vision and mission of Mount Olivet. Thank you for that. town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by, yet in the dark streets shine.
We pray together, God of peace, your birth among us is good news of great joy for all people. Turn our hearts towards each other so that we may love our neighbor and share what we have to those in need. Amen. We praise you, O oh God, for your unfolding story since the beginning of time and for how your spirit of love creates and stirs and draws us to you. We remember all the prophetic voices of ordinary people who said yes to the telling of your story of grace and love. For Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth and Simeon and Anna, for the shepherds, who trusted in how you called them to fulfill your promises to come in flesh and blood to save the world. Oh God, your intention from so long ago has been to come and break in with light and to shine in the darkness of all of us sitting in the shadows of death to show us the way step by step down this path of peace. And so Jesus is born to be the Prince of Peace Emmanuel, God with us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, you come to us in bread and wine with love and forgiveness, mercy and compassion. Send your spirit on us in this meal that we may behold your presence and be held in your love. And now we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You're a part of this story. There's a place for you at this table. Light has come into the darkness and the good news of great joy, and you are forever changed. So simply open your hearts, your spirits, and your bodies to receive. God is born for you. Dear friends online, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those who are here in the sanctuary, a couple logistical things. The wafer is gluten-free, and it's really good. And you will also, um, as you come up front, um, move to the side and receive either grape juice or wine. The wine is red, the grape juice is uh, more clear in color. If you are here on this side, the ushers will lead you up to a third station. Um, and after you receive communion, you're invited into uh, a time of prayer. 
So please come forward. The feast is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We pray together, humble God, you came into this world as a child in a manger, and you come to us again in ordinary bread and wine. Send us from this table with joy in our hearts, ready to live the good news that you are with us in all things. Amen. Now we take time um, in prayer, and I invite you after each of the prayer petitions to respond. Um, I will respond, God of heavenly peace, and please respond here our prayer. We come to you, O God, and open our hearts and our minds to your love, your incarnate presence and forgiveness. God of love, we give you thanks for this holy night as we gather together to hear again that you cannot stay away, that you come into this world person by person in order to be with us and to save us. Help us notice your presence in the ordinary details of our lives. You are creating in the world at every moment, leading us to new places and people, putting back together our broken pieces and connecting us with each other. We ask especially for your creating and healing presence be in areas of conflict throughout the world, in the shattered, unsettled places of our own lives. God, may joy be found within the sadness, barefoot and all. God of heavenly peace. God of light, we pray that each of us may be your light in the world for us to say yes and just go. And in our own unique way, be part of the sharing goodness with others, finding ways to unite people, to help them, to be with them. Help us, O oh God, to trust in faith that nothing in this world can separate us from your love, Nothing can separate us from the forgiveness and the hope that you instill, God of heavenly peace. Connecting and nourishing God, we pray especially for people who are hungry, who don't have a home, who have a shattered dream or hope, who are alone tonight for so many reasons, for people who are overworked, and underworked. We pray for the vastness of your people, for the communion of saints, to those people we love who are not with us here but in heaven with you. Help us claim and trust and rejoice in a love that connects heaven and earth, God of heavenly peace. Compassionate God, we pray for faith, faith to trust in you when we doubt, when we don't know what comes next, remind us that you hold us in this life and in death, and that you do have a plan and a purpose for each of us in the world. Help us be patient as this unfolds. We pray that we each may hear, that we count that we are favored, and you call us to be a part of what you continue to bring forth each day. God of heavenly peace. And God, we pause now in the sacredness of this moment and this place to name in our hearts the circumstances, the people, the places we call you to show up. God of heavenly peace. God, for all these things that we have prayed tonight, amen. So I have some announcements for you. In addition to preaching barefoot, I can promise you that I will not be the only pastor here next year. And it is with joy that our church council unanimously approved the recommendation for our next associate pastor that came forth from the call committee we have some administrative details to take place, and we will publicly announce uh, this new leader among us on January 9th, and we will have a congregational vote to approve this new leader as Mount Olivet's next associate pastor on January 23rd, and that is very good news. 
And so more details will come um, uh, for voting for members. Um, if you have been visiting and are interested in membership, um, we do have a class coming up on January 16th, and we look forward to having you be a part of that and this future that God is creating here at Mount Olivet. Um, and we are very thrilled and excited for all that is ahead, indeed. Um, Merry Christmas uh, to you and your families. It's so good to see faces and families together in whole pews. And for those of you who are online, we are still living in this marvel mix of both worlds, and we celebrate the ways that we can do that, and for all the ways that you're celebrating tonight, and uh, for you to ponder a little bit on uh, the news that is coming to you, for you to share and to say yes to in the world, um, to lead you ahead into this new year. Um, so it's great to see you again and be with you. So it is our tradition and a special one here at Mount Olivet that we sing Silent Night together. Um, if you have your candle, uh, know that um, someone will come down on the ends and light the first candle. And it's really helpful if you can dip the unlit candle into the lit candle. Um, as we sing Silent Night together, and in the very last verse that we sing a cappella, I invite you to lift your candle a little bit higher um, so that light can shine in the world. And so we now close tonight as we sing Silent Night.
And now receive this blessing. Receive the good news of great joy. God's peace descending upon you. God's hope rising around you. And God's love dwelling within you. Be blessed by the God who is born into this world for you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is born. Thanks be to God.